Well, good morning. This is uh, Frank Taylor coming to you with Nature in Your Backyard. Uh, this morning is Wednesday, April 8th. This time of uh, coronavirus, I have to check the calendar every day. I don't know what day it is. Every day it's just uh, drifting into the next day. And I'm not sure how to figure things out. I want to say a special shout out this morning to Cheyenne and Kylie. Cheyenne was one of my former students, and now her daughter Kylie is watching. And Kylie, I need to tell you, I saw your uh, science video on what happens when you put cotton candy in a bowl of water. That was really cool. And I'm glad to see that you and your mom are doing science at home. So the, uh, my series started with the uh, uh, closure of schools with the coronavirus. And uh, this was my outreach to uh, students in the Radford City school system. And I started this with no forethought, no plan, no idea. I just, uh, uh, Clark Ramsey said, Frank, why don't you do a nature video thing? You you love it, you could share that, that would be a great thing. And so um, this is how it started. And I'm here doing it, I have a YouTube channel now, and uh, if you're tuning in and you're new, um, this is my nature education backyard laboratory. And we've been talking about things that you can find in the spring uh, or uh, early spring, like uh, these birds' nests, and uh, we discussed yellow jackets and paper wasps, and we talked about the difference between fungi and uh, plants. Um, we've been looking at uh, what's blooming now, like this uh, yellow mustard. So if you haven't seen uh, some of my episodes, you can go back. My goal is to follow spring right now as it unfolds. And what I'm showing you and what I'm talking about and telling you the story are things that are happening now, things that are um, uh, blooming right now. If you walk out your door in your backyard or a local park or in your neighborhood, what are those things that are blooming and what is their name? And the name opens up and empowers you to the history of of, of the plant and its biology and stuff. And I don't want you to just listen to me. I want you, actually, I want you to fact check me. After I name something and tell you about it, Google it. Look at various articles. What can you find uh, out more about it? Look at some of the nicer pictures of it so you can identify it more easily. So this morning, um, I'm excited to, and I'm looking down to make sure they're still there. Uh, the other day, uh, I did a, uh, an episode on eastern newts. The eastern newts are reproducing right now. And if you go to a pond or lake near you, you may find uh, adult eastern newts in the process of breeding, uh, maybe for adults only. Um, uh, you will often see a, a male newt gripping a female with his back legs around her neck, both pointing in the same direction. Um, and, and that's how their process starts. So I was really excited the other day, and it was kind of a rainy day like this, and it's drizzling on me right now. Um, uh, I found the, uh, the intermediate stage of the F that I talked about in my video on Eastern Newts walking around on the, on the path in front of me. And if you read about them, they'll say, Eastern Newts are often found on a rainy day walking across the forest floor on the leaf litter. And sure enough, there he was. So let me let me let's uh, let's do some close-ups and take a look at these guys and talk about their life stages and some of their physical characteristics and their biology right now. <clears throat> so originally, and if you haven't seen the video, go back and check out my video on the eastern newt. This is a eastern newt, and you can see he has a yellow belly and a flattened tail. That is a great adaptation for swimming underwater. And he doesn't breathe in gills, but at this stage, they stay in the water pretty much permanently. And I want to try to turn him over. And you can see uh, the swelling near the back of his tail uh, or, or uh, near his legs. That's uh, another indication that they're in their uh, breathing stage. So here he is in the water. They're really good swimmers. You'll see them floating around a lot. Um, and while pe people often talk about, you know, they'll say, oh yeah, that's great for fishing. I always fish for lizards. Well, these guys aren't lizards. These are amphibians. Amphibians have to, uh, are organisms that live part of their life in water, 
part of their life on land, um, and their egg stage is always in the water, and they emerge as gilled larvae. And these guys are the same. So right now, these guys are breeding in ponds, males and females, and they're getting ready to start laying their eggs. So the eggs will hatch out here in, a, in the next uh, coming month or so. And when I find the larvae, of course, I'll do a Facebook Live on the larvae and show you those. And they'll stay in the water as a larva for uh, uh, up until fall. And in fall, uh, you can see a damselfly nymph on the side. I'll have to talk to you about that in a minute. Um, in the fall, they'll lose their gills, they'll shed their gills, and they'll move out on land. And they'll live for three to five years in the terrestrial eft stage. And so this is called a red eft. And these guys sometimes have just really, really, really bright red-orange colors, and they really stand out on the forest floor. Now, think about what do we know about, about brightly colored animals, like yellow jackets, tigers... Um, bumblebees, yellow, orange, bright colors and animals often signify danger. And while these guys are completely, completely harmless, he's, this is, he is so handsome, isn't he? Um, uh, they are toxic if you eat them. So uh, very often organisms that are toxic or poisonous, um, like coral snakes, will advertise their toxicity or their danger to other wildlife by uh, having bright colors, and uh, these newts are no exception. Notice how different the tail of this guy is compared to the tail of the aquatic stage. He's really well adapted for life on land, and you could, can you see that his scale looks almost scaly? There is no, there is no salamander in the world that goes through such a, a complicated life stage like these guys. And most salamanders, and I'll be showing you different kinds of salamanders and different species as the year goes on, have very smooth, slimy skin. And you can see that this guy's skin is almost perfectly adapted to life on land. It's, it's, uh, it's almost like uh, scaly in nature. Um, so that's the terrestrial stage. Um, he will live on land, uh, walking around on the forest floor, looking for little insects and soft-bodied things to eat. And he'll uh, stay as this um, terrestrial stage for up to three to five years. So follow this story. Eggs are laid now in the spring. So this is April, May, right? They hatch out in the water and live as a, as a larval guild stage. Then they emerge as this red F stage with their uh, bright bright colors and live on land for three to five years in this stage and grow bigger and deposit fat deposits and get ready for breeding. So after five years, they return to the water. And when they return to the water, they transform again and they tr change colors that make them uh, blend into the muddy bottom background a little bit better. They get a yellow belly and their tail becomes less lizard-like like this one. Where did he go? Hello. And more flattened for swimming and beautifully adapted for swimming in, in the water. So this guy will live up to 15 years. So uh, red F stage aquatic uh, adult stage. I haven't been able to show you the eggs or um, uh, the larval stage, but I will. So um, today's episode has uh, been on the Easter Newt, and here's a quick little review that I prepared. And like I said, I'm new to all this technology, and, and I, I have no patience for technology, and I'm learning how to do this. Um, so here is the, it's a, he called the Eastern Newt. Here's its scientific name. Uh, it's life stages. Uh, it starts out as an egg laid underwater in ponds. Its larva is a guild. And um, 
and it's aquatic, which means water. And in the fall, it sheds its gills to move on land. The red F stage is the intermediate stage, living two to five years on land. And the adult stage, it'll return to the pond to breed and lay eggs each year and live up to uh, 15 years. So um, this episode uh, was brought to you by Nature in Your Backyard. I have it on my YouTube channel so you can share it and follow up. I'm working on learning how to edit videos. I love doing the live though because I, I love teaching you. And there's nothing I love more than sharing my knowledge of natural history with people. So follow me through the spring. I'll be bringing, I'll be showing up each day. There's more that I can do. I've been doing one to three broadcasts every day. I'm trying to limit myself to one per day, but I get so excited when I find something new. For example, I never know what I'll find. And in this basin, um, quite by accident, there's also a damselfly larva. So uh, my next uh, episode is going to be on uh, the aquatic larva of uh, some of the terrestrial uh, flying insects like dragonflies and damselflies that you see. And that was just unexpectedly showed up in my net when I went to get the newts. So this has been Frank Taylor coming to you live. Uh, send me questions um, and I'll answer them as they come up. Uh, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for tuning in. It's been fun teaching you.